Welcome back to Daytime. We're at RogersTV.com. We tweet, we Facebook, and we give away free stuff. We've got a chance for you to win um, some awesome free stuff coming up, including those four tickets to any London Majors game and qualify for Kelly Clarkson at the John Labatt Center. Yeah, wicked prize. And if you need somebody to go with you, I'm your girl. Just saying. Really? Shameless. I know, shameless, whatever. <laughs> All right, well, can fitness actually help to reverse type 2 diabetes? Let's find out from our fitness expert. Kari Schneider is here from Empower Conditioning. Is this true? I mean, diabetes runs in my family, so this conversation I'm very excited about. Okay, so type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes? Oh, I don't know. What is the difference? Okay. It's the insulin one. Okay, so the one that needs insulin, someone's basically born with the inability to produce in insulin. And so their pancreas can't pump out that hormone. They need that hormone to monitor blood sugar levels. And so they end up having to inject with insulin. So it's something that they'll always have to do. Um, I'm not entirely clear on the, the likelihood of you or your daughter getting type 1, but when it comes to type 2, that one's much more manageable and controllable because that's the one that uh, is influenced highly by your exercise and your diet. But if we look at Canada, we're looking at 3 million people with diabetes, <coughs> excuse me, diabetes, but 75 to 90 percent of them are type 2 diabetes. So this is the... So it's the s there's really only a small, small percentage with type 1, but there, is, there are a ton of people with type 2. And that's not, that's not all of it. Six million people have what's called pre-diabetes. So I I if you think of Canada's population, we, what, roughly 30 million people? Just over 30 million. Yeah, okay. So 6 million people have prediabetes and 3 million have diabetes. Wow, that's yeah. an epidemic. It's, it's amazingly shocking and it's, uh, it's a huge problem. The really, really hopeful and uh, good thing about it is that it's, it's controllable. If you look at the 3 million people who have diabetes, only about 10 to 15 percent of it 10 to 15 percent of them need the insulin injections. The other 85 percent are people who can manage their diabetes through exercise and diet and they're people who can even reverse type 2 diabetes, take the symptoms away, like get so that they don't have the disease anymore. So it's it's a pretty, it's a it's a sad thing because they used to call type 2 diabetes adult onset diabetes. Right. And now they're, because of the inactivity, because of the poor diets, overeating is a big thing too. Children as young as four or five years old are getting type two diabetes. And wow. it's, it's a terrible thing. And there's, there's a few risk factors that, uh, that'll predispose you for it. Um, different, different ethnicities will have a higher likelihood, uh, things like that, but um, yeah, it's a really, it's a sad, a sad state of affairs, basically. Well, we, we can also put a positive spin on it, too, because it, this can be, this can be the wake-up call that people need to turn their lives around, too, Well, y you don't joke about smoking anymore, really. Like, our, our society has kind of shifted its, its, yeah, its thinking. You don't joke about somebody who's smoking, because people know that that will kill you. Mm -hmm. it, it will, it's one of the top three things that'll give you cancer. So, but people still joke about their, you know, weekend binge or their lack of activity or things like that. But in reality, that's slowly killing us. It's, that's really what's happening. It's slowly killing us. It's becoming an epidemic, but it's reversible. And that's the exciting thing about it. Um, there's, there's some information on diabetes.ca. There's also uh, more information about activity on the CSEP website. That's CSEP, um, Canadian Society for Exercise Physiology. Uh, and what you're going to find on there are things like this is a tool. If you look at this, this is from diabetes.ca. And it's just a, it's a little laminated exercise tool. You could use a little erase, dry erase marker to put on there. And th the recommendations from the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology are that you get 150 minutes of activity per week. And the research shows that to reverse diabetes, the, the symptoms, and to lessen your likelihood of getting it if you have pre-diabetes already, then you have to do the aerobic side of activity plus the resistance training. Research solidly shows some very good studies, two of the top studies, 
show that it's the two together. It's not just aerobic training, it's not just resistance training, it's doing both that gets the most bang for your buck, essentially. So you've got to do both aerobic training, resistance training, you've got to do at least 150 minutes per week. There are other tools out there, this is a, a little size of your plate kind of thing. How should you distribute your food on your plate? It should be the larger portion of vegetables, the smaller portion of starches, the medium to small portion of proteins. This is a magnet that you throw in your fridge, so you've got options there. This is from Steps Count. It's a, it's a pedometer type com company where you can order that. Um, so it's, there's a lot of information out there in order to get the changes that are needed. What can have the, the greater impact, nutrition or exercise? It's, it's really that combination. combination? It's, the, it's the two. Nutrition makes a big change, but the studies are very clear that the exercise has to be there too. That's amazing. You can, even if the nutrition doesn't change, the blood markers will change as soon as you start exercise. So you'll start lowering cholesterol, lowering blood pressure. That will change even if your weight didn't change at all. Um, but it's really the combination. The eating has to change the sedentary behavior has to change and that's what's going to prevent people people who have pre-diabetes they really have that op opportunity to turn around and you've got all these risk factors for pre-diabetes if you've had a family member if you are over 40 if you have high cholesterol if you have high blood pressure those are all if you ha carry your weight around the midsection primarily those are all the screening questions that they use on a screening tool to say, hey, um, are you going to have prediabetes? Do you have prediabetes? Right now, there's a research, research study going on at York University, and they, it's the um, Physical Activity and Chronic Disease Unit. And what they're doing is they're taking a screen, a, a questionnaire, using this questionnaire to validate it to see if it successfully predicts whether or not you have prediabetes. Hmm. So then they do the blood, they have them fill it out. The screening tool says uh, yes, you do or no, you don't. And then they validate that with a blood test and say, oh, did it work? Did it give us the right answer? And it does. So far in 600 subjects, they, they find that it does. So it's, there's, there's information online, whether it's diabetes.ca, whether it's through the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology. You gotta get that 150 minutes in a week. It doesn't have to be all at once. It's all spread out through <laughs> those seven days. That's why you got your little chart. You got to get the eating so that it's the healthy stuff. And really, that's yeah. just 20 minutes a day, right? It's not that. It's no. not that much. So like should be able to get it out it out over seven days. Definitely. Easy, easy, easy. Cool. Thanks, Sorry. Right, thank you. No problem. All right, there you go. Saving lives, one Saving day at a time. <laughs> exactly. All right, you can uh, go and chat with Kari if you'd like at Empower Conditioning. She's located at 206 Piccadilly Street. Absolutely. All right, it's uh, time for us to take a look at today's pet of the day.